bad. <laughs> so we called it um, when there was no carers pension because I think it was a pretty tough life for a lot of people back then. So thanks for staying with us. This is part three. And this was Wendy's segment originally, so we send our love to Wendy because she can't make it today, obviously. Um, and we're going to discuss a mum who had been doing a fair bit of emotional weightlifting. Her shoulders were heavy and she needed some respite. This mum was witty and determined and intuitive. However, her daughter is mentally ill. And she's probably a single mum without a support network, or I'm sure she would have been across to Galilee in a flash to see Jesus. Because when she heard Jesus was in the region, she straight away came to him and she knows what he's capable of. She'd heard and she believed well before she saw him. And this is typical of a worried mother. She knew her options. You know what it's like, you can't sleep, you're constantly thinking about your next move or your next option and you're on Dr Google all night and you're down this rabbit hole and that rabbit hole and you're trying to work it all out. Which coffin should I buy, brown or black? You know, it's pretty bad. We all get carried away thinking the worst. So some call her the Syrophoenician woman or the Canaanite lady. And I hate to think what her neighbours probably called her. Back then, mental health illness was not understood. You were thought to have a, a demon possessing you or an unpure spirit. Imagine having to cope with a child like that. Ah, back then, let alone a oh, child like that now, let alone back then. It's just so debilitating. This sickness is unpredictable and scary. It causes social isolation and anxiety. It is so exhausting and to top it off, you and the child are judged and you're made to feel guilty and powerless. But this mum knows a once in a lifetime opportunity when she sees it and she's going to grab hold of it. This would have taken lots of adrenaline and courage in her culture to do what she's about to do. Enter Jesus, the compassionate and kind Jesus the Saviour. But he's not here in Tyre to do much preaching and converting. Was he in the region maybe for some R&R &R after John's death? A sea change perhaps? Whatever, he's been on a journey with his disciples for a couple of days and they've made a stop in Tyre, a very wealthy seaport town. He knows what's going to happen next. He knows words spreading through the town that he's there. He knows that in Sixth Avenue there's a mum who's heard Jesus is here and she's rushing to get to him despite her circumstances. But they all enter the house anyway for some peace and privacy. And it's like Jesus can't help but respond to her faith. He's come all this way and he just knows what's going to happen and grace has no boundaries. So here he is in Tyre and he knows something exciting is going to happen. And I think it's the same for us. Jesus knows our faith. He knows what each of us need to strengthen our faith. And his disciples were also in for a test. He's about to demonstrate his recent teaching with the Pharisees. It's recorded in Mark 7 just before he goes here. It's not about the externals. It's not about how much knowledge we have. It's not about our traditions, our, our race, if we're male or female. It's about how you follow him, your attitude and your willingness to put Jesus first when a temptation arises. Oh, okay, so I've got a little um, aside as we pass in through. Have we got that microphone just for the people who are listening on the side? That can go back to Daniel because you might be interested in these dead rocks. Uh, Daniel found this, so I'll let him explain what they are. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Um, the dead rocks... Um, as it says on the slide, Eshman was the chief god of the Sidonians and he was a god of healing. And actually in his temple, uh, there they've excavated and found 11 marble statues of small children that he had cured. So this literally was in her backyard. Interestingly, there's another one in Jerusalem, the Paul of Siloam, but different story. Um, so I guess it just illustrates that this woman... Um, you know, she had options uh, in terms of where she could turn, the local superstition or, or to Jesus. Yeah, so archaeology and that stuff's not really my thing, but that's, uh, <laughs> it does demonstrate the trust that this mother has um, in Jesus, a Jewish Messiah, um, when all the local yobs were heading up to Byron Bay for Eshman's latest cure. <laughs> She actually has extraordinary faith, really. It's, she's quite a little hero in herself. And um, think about her circumstances and what choice she makes. 
She knows who she wants. It's the son of David, the Messiah. And breaking all the cultural norms, she falls at his feet. Breaks the ho-hum afternoon siesta time with this loud, persistent and annoying crying. Well, according to the disciples. I can just imagine the disdainful look on the disciples' faces. The look you get when you're not meant to be there. Yeah, one of those looks. Yeah, I'm on that one. One of those looks, you know the ones. Imagine her heart would have been thumping over time, all that adrenaline, and she so succinctly gets to the point and tells Jesus her problem. If that was me, I think I would have kept blurting out examples and details. When I last gave her the Panadol, all the stuff she gets up to and the gritty stuff and the horrible stuff, and I'll just keep raving on because you get nervous and you just can't stop, and it would have seemed like eternity before Jesus finally acknowledged her. Now, um, with that microphone, might just get somebody to read um, the next, this passage for us on the screen here. I can do it from your Bible or from up on the screen. It's Matthew 15. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. So she knows what Jesus is capable of and so appeals to Jesus as the son of David. Others had used this messianic title to ask for healing, so maybe she knew about that or maybe she'd heard about a Jewish myth that the son of David, who's Solomon, was a healer that cast out demons. Whatever, she asks for mercy from the only one who can give it. And when Jesus does heal her daughter, both of them are given mercy. Imagine the weight lifted off her shoulders when her daughter is healed. Now, this passage is often used against Jesus when he doesn't answer her. Oh, yeah. They say he's been rude and ignoring her, but we know that that's not his character and we also know his miracles extend past the individual to developing others' faith also. So perhaps it's a test for his disciples. This Kenneth man wrote, Jesus is irritated by the disciples' attitudes regarding women and Gentiles. The woman's love for her daughter and her confidence in him impressed Jesus. He decides to use the occasion to help her and challenge the deeply rooted prejudices in the hearts of the disciples. In the process, he gives the woman a chance to expose the depth of her courage and faith. So the disciples needed to get over their prejudices. One day they would go back to this area after the resurrection and they're going to be witnesses of him, Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria and to the outermost parts of the earth. So perhaps Jesus is working on many faith levels here. Uh, next reader, please, could we read the next slide? He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Okay, lots going on here. It takes a little bit of working through. We've got a kind master. I think he's kind because he likes pets. He drops crumbs for them. We have a table prepared where you get fed at and get fed bread. There's children. They get fed bread before the... They get fed bread before the pets. There's sheep, which is... Israel, and Jesus is their good shepherd. There's dogs, which are puppies. That's apparently the word for it, puppies. And they hoover the floor for you, so I appreciate puppies. Um, and they're representative of the Gentiles here. Then, of course, we have the woman and Jesus. Now, for Jesus to talk to her in those times would have been shocking to his disciples. A woman, a Gentile, and to talk back and forth like this only happened between equals. So Jesus elevates her status by having a conversation with her. In his eyes, she was someone worthy of engaging with. He knew her heart. She's humble and has bowed before him asking for help. He was her only hope. The disciples probably in unison all nodded and agreed that, yes, you know, Jesus is only for the Jews. 
And Jesus is the hope of Israel, but it does extend. We know this. Romans tells us, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and also for the Greek. There's an order. And just like children come before pets when it comes to food, it's Jews first, then the Greeks. This is not an insult. Jesus Christ is the seed of Abraham, and he was sent to God's chosen people first. And we benefit from this blessing too, the Gentiles do. This is exactly what the woman latches onto. She's straight away on his wavelengths. Maybe she heard, yeah, pet dogs should get fed, but first feed your kids. I think, I think the disciples probably heard, yeah, bread is for children, not dogs. And so they saw no hope in what Jesus said, but she was not giving up. She's not fussy about what blessing she eats from the master's table. Crumbs are better than nothing. And crumbs from the bread of life are still the bread of life. You can't argue with that kind of faith. It's great faith. She ticked all the boxes and will be remembered for this. Can we get... um, I think I had another quote there. Maybe I didn't save the document, but there was one that um, I think you used, Judy, from Hebrews 11, uh, that um, faith... What's the faith quote there? Yes. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So she, she ticked all those boxes. She believed and she saw him, yeah. Okay, let's read this next verse. Is somebody else like to read that for us? Matthew 15, verse 28. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Yeah. And her daughter was healed at that moment. And here, the word of Jesus goes forth and does something wonderful. Again, she can't see what he's done. She just believes. That's great faith. I just wish Matthew had included one more verse. It's just a bit annoying it stops there. I'd like it to say that she jumped for joy or she hugged Jesus or she ran out and she cried and she raced home to her daughter and did this or that and that's all we get. But it's still pretty good, isn't it? So, um, oh, that's the quote there, yeah. And then further on in Hebrews, it has this little bit, made strong out of weakness. And I thought, yeah, that's her. She, had, she was made strong from a very weak situation she was in, Jesus, because of Jesus. Now... Ah, yes, this quote here, I love this quote. So shall my word go be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And that was, that was the result of Jesus saying, you know, um, your daughter, your request is granted. Yeah. Okay, so a few things to take home with us today, apart from all the other lovely things we've learnt. She was persistent. Um, We are never told to give up on prayer, even when we don't get an answer or even if others are against us. It is not pointless repetition if we are genuinely asking. This woman demonstrates sometimes... This woman demonstrates sometimes the lack of an answer is not a no, but a test to see whether our faith will continue. Another thing is she steps outside her comfort zone. Nothing was going to stop her. Nothing discouraged her or disheartened her. Her daughter drove her on for action. What we do for our children's salvation is shown here with this determined parent. The disciples thought it was disgraceful. Jesus saw it as great faith. She was humble. She was happy with crumbs and trusts there are leftovers for all the Gentiles. After all, why was Jesus here? We might feel we are not first-class disciples. We might feel disadvantaged in our circumstances, but Jesus is here for us. He is in our lives for a reason, and that reason is our salvation. This woman saw past the barriers to that simple fact. She had faith that Jesus could heal. She wasn't synagogue educated. The woman wasn't a Bible scholar, but she knew who Jesus was and what he could do, and that is what mattered. 
The woman's example demonstrates Jesus responds graciously to all who have the courage and persistence to ask him. The disciples thought they were privileged because they were Jewish. In reality, this woman gained true privilege because she had faith. And that's it. Thanks for listening.